With the prerequisites out of the way, it is now time to perform an installation of SCCM. This is a hands-on lab nugget, so now's a great time to launch the lab if you wish to follow along as we get this beast up and running together. Once your lab finishes loading, you'll be planted right on SCCM NUG, which is where we'll be performing this installation. You'll also have File Explorer opened up into the root of the installation media here for SCCM current branch version 1802. So let's begin here by launching the Splash application, which will get us into the opening screen here for installing SCCM. Once that's up here, we've got some tools and standalone components, additional resources. What we're interested in here is installation. So assuming you have the base prerequisites installed, which we do, we'll be able to hit this link and it'll take us right into the wizard. Before you go any further, you should verify that you have a supported SQL Server installation available. We do on our local machine here. Identify the fully qualified domain name of the computer that's running that server. Again, that's our local machine here. And then confirm that the computers for Configuration Manager site systems meet the minimum system requirements. We have done all of that, so we're good to go. We can hit next here on the opening screen. This screen will determine what the wizard will do from here on out and gives us a number of actions that we can perform. Do you want to install a configuration primary site? Why, yes, we do. That's what we're here for. And you can also check this box if you want to dramatically speed up this process as it'll use default settings for many of these pages. We're going to uncheck this because we want to take the long route and see what our options are for each one of these pages. We can also choose to install a configuration manager CAS, central administration site. If we already have a site on this machine, we can upgrade it to a CAS. We can recover it. We can perform site maintenance or reset it or uninstall it completely. So we'll be back into this wizard later on when we need to perform some of these tasks. But for now, we're going to choose the first one, keep that second option unchecked, and hit next. Here's where you'll enter in your product key if you have one or choose to evaluate the product. And you can always run this wizard again to enter in a license key uh, to take the evaluation edition and upgrade it here to the fully licensed product, which is what I'm going to do after this lab. So going forward, we'll be working with a fully licensed version of SECM. But for now, choose the first option to install the evaluation edition and hit next. Before we can go any further, we must accept the license term. So hit those three check boxes and then choose next. Next up, we either need to download the required setup files, or if you've already done so and stored them somewhere in your environment, you can reference them using previously downloaded files. Now, for me here, I'm going to choose the first option, and I'm going to download them into this directory living inside of the share over on our file server. You can choose the second option and place this same value in here as they're already downloaded for you in your lab environment, and that'll save a lot of time waiting for this wizard to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next here and just give this about 20 minutes or so to download these files into that location. Next up, we have a couple of screen here for language support. The first screen is for configuration manager, so the server side here. And if we choose next, the second screen is for client languages that you wish to support. So I'm going to choose English for both of these and hit next. Arguably, the most important screen here is specifying your site code and site name. Your site code is a three-digit code that uniquely identifies this site within your hierarchy. I'm going to choose NUG here, and then your site name, I'll call Nugget Lab Site. You can also choose your installation folder here, and if you want to install the Configuration Manager console, which we do, is that's where we'll be spending a good majority of our time managing our SCCM infrastructure. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and hit next. Here's where we can choose to join this primary site to an existing hierarchy. We would enter in the fully qualified domain name of that central administration site that we're joining to here. Or we can install this primary site as a standalone site, which is what we're going to do. And you're not locked into this, as you'll see here when you hit next, it'll give us a message just letting us know we can always expand this into a hierarchy at a later time by installing a central administration site and then joining this primary site to it. So we're good here. We'll go ahead and hit yes to continue. Here is where we configure the site database. So first, you'll need to specify the fully qualified domain name of your SQL server. Again, that's going to be our local machine here, so that looks good. Also, if you install the named instance of SQL Server, you'll need to enter in that instance name here. We did not. We just have a default instance name, so we'll leave that blank. And then you can also specify the name of your database. The default name here will be cm underscore and your site code. So this looks good as well. And we'll leave the service broker port at the default of 4022. So this all looks good. Let's hit next. Here is where we can specify the data and log file paths for that configuration manager SQL Server database. And it is recommended to place these on separate physical disks as it'll reduce contention and improve the performance 
of our Configuration Manager database. We shouldn't have to worry about that here in our lab environment, so we're good with the defaults, and we'll hit Next. Here is where you will determine where you want the SMS Provider Site Server role installed. Again, this is the piece that facilitates communication between the Configuration Manager console and the site database. We're going to be placing this again on this SECM NUG machine, but it can go almost anywhere. Notice the note, almost anywhere. It cannot be installed in a server that is configured for SQL Server clustering. But this looks good, and well, let's go ahead and hit Next. Here is where you'll determine if you want your entire SECM infrastructure to communicate using HTTPS or HTTP, and then use HTTPS if both sides support it. It's almost always best to choose the second option here when initially configuring your SECM hierarchy, as it takes away the complexities of PKI and HTTPS. Once you get everything up and running, you can then determine what features you want to utilize and if they'll require HTTPS, and then configure it from there. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start here with HTTP, and as we go on, anything that requires HTTPS will configure that specific role to support it. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and hit Next. Here's where we can choose to have the wizard install a management point and a distribution point. We're going to do both of these, and again, they're both going to live on this machine. The only thing we need to do here is choose our client communication. And again, we'll start here with HTTP for both of these and hit Next. We can hit next here as well to acknowledge that Microsoft is going to collect diagnostic and usage data. And then our final piece here is setting up a service connection point. This is used anytime we want to reach outside or Microsoft wants to reach inside, which is what that previous screen was all about. This is used to collect usage data from us, and it's also used by Configuration Manager to download updates and new features. And this is also the component that we'll use when we want to configure Intune for mobile device management. So this looks good. We will configure a service connection point on this machine for our primary site. So let's go ahead and hit next. And look at that, we made it through this incredibly long wizard. The summary screen here will show you all the decisions you made throughout the wizard. We're good, so we can hit next. And here's where it's gonna run that prerequisite check one more time. If all those checks pass, the begin install button will light up. And we can safely ignore that warning. It's bogus. We did configure SQL Server properly. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and hit begin install. And I should probably warn you, this will take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour or so to complete. So don't feel like you need to see this all the way through. I'll come back when it's done. We'll verify that everything installed correctly and be on our way. All right, whew, that was a long wait. An hour and 15 minutes later, and we're done. And this is the task right here that took most of that time because we stored them over the network. That's about double the time it took for this installation to complete. But hey, we're done. And now let's verify installation by closing out of the wizard. We'll close out of the splash screen here. We'll hit the start button and we'll open up the configuration manager console. As I mentioned, we're gonna be spending a lot of time in this tool configuring and managing our infrastructure as well as managing and monitoring our users, our devices, and everything that SCCM can touch. But just to give this a quick verification here, let's head down to administration in the left-hand nav. We'll expand site configuration. We can hit sites here to see information about our Nugget Lab site. And we can head down here to servers and site system roles, and we can see that our SCCM NUG is our primary site server, and we can see all of the roles that this server is currently hosting. That concludes this hands-on lab nugget for installing System Center Configuration Manager, current branch, version 1802. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.